Louder with Crowder Studios, protected exclusively by Walther. And Hopper. Louder with Crowder's spooktacular U of M takeover, October 25th. Overflow room now at Pier Point Commons Lounge with costume contest, giveaways, and a whole lot of scares. Don't miss it. I just want to, you know, laugh about things every night, but... Bill Cosby says that being declared a sexually violent predator is going to damage his reputation. Not available for comment were all the women that he raped. <laughs> ah, <shit. laughs> Hello, this is Canada. It doesn't stop here. It's a one way. It doesn't stop. <laughs> Sound of the week, and somebody, yeah, are you are is. you are you petting your Walther? I am. Mm -hmm. Very grateful that they are sponsors to uh, the Walther. show. We have a great show today. We have James O'Keefe <laughs> yeah, on the show. Boom. Latest nice. exclusive video will be talking about. It. We have Dean Cade on the show. So oh, and himself. Time. And uh, of course, we have in third chair uh, Owen Benjamin, huge pianist.com, huge pianist.com. Nice. How are you doing? Huge. It's great to be back, my friend. And then before hold on, before I bring Maybe. everyone else in, question of the day. Slow news week, obviously. A couple of stories, though. So w what bothers you more, uh, the media outrage at Donald Trump's warning to the Mexican caravan or Hollywood's retroactive feminist outrage at Disney princesses? Comment below. We're going to be discussing <laughs> both. Uh, producing, of course, Quarter oh Black Garrett. Show what's me up? Pet. That's up? awful. I'm yeah, ashamed wow. to be a part of this program. <laughs> and uh, what's the line of the day at G. Morgan Jr.? <laughs> we got a little bit Rudius. Rudius? Rudius. Cabernet Sauvignon. Is that the one who sacked the quarterback even though he was undeserving to be on that team? No, that's Rudy. <laughs> Do not like that he motion He made the picture. team. No, okay. yeah, he made the team by being a janitor. You don't no, like Rudy? That's not no, true. I, I haven't You're seen it in a while. Go Irish. Hear my dad talk about Rudy. He'll be like, he didn't deserve the spot. He it's, did. It's he, true. He didn't deserve he it. It doesn't matter what he did with it. He shouldn't have been there in the first place. Why is that? No, that's not true. <laughs> hey, speaking of shouldn't be there, you will be at the show at U of M. Yes, I will. As will in Owen. In Notre Dame year. In October 25th. Yeah. Just so you, a lot of people go, well, hold on, I tried to sign up at Eventbrite or lalocrowder.com slash tour, and it was sold out. No, no, we actually just reserved a, a big-ass room, Pierpoint's Common yeah. Lounge. There'll be an yeah. overflow party with prizes, costume contests, and our buddy Eric Nimmer will be uh, will be yeah. there. Nice. Live. Yeah, That'd so we'll be, be awesome. going back to uh, Pierpoint's Common Lounge by Skype, because we couldn't really get Hill Auditorium. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, does... Just don't cross it off your list. Yeah. Don't cross it off. Be there. Yeah. Come hang yeah. out. Be it's going to be a blast. That's and we'll be hang. visiting the lounge ourselves. Uh, by the way, leading the news. See, we finally got the news. I don't there know after only yeah, about nine it. minutes in. <laughs> Donald Trump, of course, this is all, the, the Twitter is all a buzz about this. He should warning to Mexico about the migrant caravan heading to our border. This came to us from CNBC. I must, in the strongest of terms, Donald Trump said, ask Mexico to stop this odd slot. <laughs> and if unable to do so, I will call up the U.S. military and then, in all caps, close our southern border. Yeah, hmm. all caps um, is important there. <laughs> obviously, getting all a little, caps. obviously getting a little Everything. dicier. And so, some people are concerned that we actually obtained exclusive audio oh, yeah. from yeah. President Trump's call to the president of Mexico. Well, kind of. Hello, Mexico. Uh... No, senor. This is Taco Bell. Yeah, I'm sure you just like taco. I know it's you in there, Pena. Okay, now I know, frankly, how to pronounce the little Eds with the squiggly hat. And I know because you guys tricked me last year at New Year's when I said Otto, you filthy son uh, of a... Tostada? Okay, quit the games, you tricky little beater. Listen, about that caravan, Pena. Stop giving them 
gasoline. Gasolito no bueno, okay? Uh, but, senor, you're here to drive through. Damn it, I've had enough of your crap, then, ya. Yeah. I'm coming in. Hey, crap for grace, can you move it along? And I'll take a nacho grande. I don't think yeah. they serve <laughs> the nacho grande anymore. They're always changing their it menu. Is. It is. It's always. there. That's Nachos the takeaway grande, here. Baby. <laughs> I, got, I, got the da I got a dad joke. What? Uh, caravan. <laughs> More like scaravan. Oh, wow, we led with gosh. that. And, uh, yeah, look, yeah, I, that I actually feel bad for these people. <laughs> but how terrible are, like, all of the other countries are basically pointing them north and handing them a map. Like, they're not yeah. stopping them at any borders or anything. Not at all. I no. get that you're trying to escape hell, but don't come here. Go to Canada. By the Go way, around. it is not hell because there are no <laughs> cultures Swim. that are inferior and or superior Oh, that's not true. Others. Central America has just never gotten it together. Caravans are a thing with your imagination. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's like a marathon. They're like giving them water and Gatorade. Yeah. <laughs> here you go, guys. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I guess, well, let's just pivot. There's there's no, there's nowhere else to mine yeah, here. Really. Uh, so turning to, I, I guess, entertainment uh, news. Uh, uh, Amy Schumer said that she feels, quote, really bad for women more attractive than her. <laughs> she uh, feels really bad about a lot of stuff. When asked <laughs> That's a lot of women about being about. compared to, I think a specific woman in the interview is, is what spurred it. Uh, she said, quote, being a woman sucks. I feel really bad for these girls who are so hot because guys can't handle it. You can't have a conversation. I actually feel really bad for them. <laughs> Aw, oh. that's so sweet. Responded the woman in question while her boyfriend used Amy Schumer to help her over a puddle. <laughs> <laughs> the big Why is he stepping on the, the jump area? The lady? <laughs> what, what a gentleman. That is a gentleman, yeah. Hey, that's is what not, the point I particularly that's like the how the, the attractive woman wear her foot placement is like yeah. just to add insult yeah. to injury. Right to, the <laughs> right to the cooch. The thing about like leftists, they, they, they don't see individuals, so it's just women. When she says, I feel bad for women, or it sucks being a woman, she's basically yeah. saying it sucks being me, <laughs> and I don't know how to say individual, so I just say a demographic. Yeah. <laughs> this, yeah. Is, this is like a beatdown for it men every day. It sucks being... Fat and slutty. <laughs> Crowder, it sucks. I feel bad for you because you're in better shape than me. Like the I fact that you, better shape. you just have you just have the big uh, the big hips because you're you were a football player. Listen, I can oh, I yes. can bounce them. Yeah, I can bounce them. Oh, don't bounce you're, them. You're, again. you're, you're I stronger. Would do it, but I'm wearing black, so it doesn't show. <laughs> you're stronger, <laughs> leaner, and quicker. <laughs> you know, Let's be I, honest. Let's, no, I can't. No, I can't no, do it. Right. Freak athlete here is Gerald at G Morgan Jr. Uh, it's all that wine, I guess. Be it's beating up on Michigan. It's uh, actually uh, actually I guess helps uh, uh, prevent uh, est uh, estrogen. I've got good cardiovascular estrogen buildup in the body. The aromatase. I guess I guess the resveratrol in wine is good for that. Yeah, definitely helps. That's why you have. That's why you don't have. Them titties. Uh, here's something to give you nightmares. By the way, I love how Owen, where you were talking, you're just talking about like a complete sociopath. You're not even talking. You're not even looking at Gerald he's, or he's me. Looking he's just away. talking like this. Well, then I see my thoughts Whoa. in my head. <laughs> Owen's like a cat. He's always plotting our doom. He and said every there'd be Christmas lights <laughs> in yeah, my head. Time. No, but I'm protective. I'm you're like plotting, <laughs> but it's good stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm not How's sure we can good? say the same about this first segment. Know. James O'Keefe, Dean Cain <laughs> coming up. Um, yeah, here's something uh, that gives children nightmares. This is a video from a police dash cam uh -huh. Wait, that shows, on. we this have video, right? That actually nightmares. shows the spider, a giant spider <laughs> ready and poised uh -huh. to attack a traffic cop. Oh, oh my oh gosh. My yeah, do we have the clip? That is, look, the thing is just... It's ready to pounce. That it's is absolutely terrible. <laughs> it's terrifying. <laughs> the spider, by the way, was later detained and questioned regarding assault on a police officer, as well as his involvement with the Arachnid Brotherhood. Oh so that gosh. does seem, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> this that is makes legit, sense. like, makes sense. stuff of your nightmares, man. That's Nick man. Nolte spider. Oh, hell. <laughs> That's you a, gotta join us if you wanna be alive in the clink, something like that. <laughs> That's like a Spider-Man's older brother that got in a mess. <laughs> you know, he wasn't all about helping people, he's all about uh, mess. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I have a deep fear of spiders, by the way. This is this yeah. is like Snake Island, what you did to me. Oh, we were talking, okay, oh, no, here's no, no, the no. thing, you say Snake Island, actually, in an area of, uh, several areas of Texas, but South Dallas, there are these spiders that now actually work as a team, and you will see no. that have whole canvases no. of spider webs over them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we were driving by there at one point. We were on a road trip, Johnny yeah. Boy and I. Yeah. Like, what? What is that? We walked up, and it just the the look on her face was, oh, oh. it's just all. It almost looks as though you're. You, it, it, it looks as though you're staring at a tree through a cheesecloth, and it's oh, just wow. a film of spider. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. Someone tweet yeah. me at Scrider or tweet the pictures. Uh, I, yeah, it's pretty I think I've seen that now that you say that. I didn't know it was yeah. a team uh, of. Have you heard about spiders, camel spiders? Though. Oh, oh, yeah, gosh. they're not really spiders, though, technically. What are they? What are they? They're technically closer the, to the scorpion family. Yeah, they eat, like, lizards and stuff. They're gigantic, right? Dude, some of my buddies that served in the Middle East, they'll go in a, uh, a camel and just... Ah. 
Uh, really? I don't know. They uh, might be lying to me. I'm very oh, gullible. Completely mi- Garrett missed the visual with you. Do it. We'll show him again. Uh, for people. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. We got it. Yeah, we got we, it. So that's important. That yeah. For me, that really uh, that drove the point it. home. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have been very confused. Uh, <laughs> listening to the audio. Sorry. So finally, if spiders don't terrify you, there's there's this. Um, trying to think of how to introduce it. Just a, there's no way to. It's a new viral video entitled uh, "My Partner Identifies as a Dog." Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've been involved in pet play for my entire life. Oh, play, uh, huh? A lot yeah, of kids like to play pretend. <laughs> that's like a man. Pretend to be an animal. What that is? No, man to woman. Doing it. I just never. That's a man to woman to dog. Oh. Pet play through Tony. This, this <laughs> is, yeah. Started dating uh, handlers. <sighs> <laughs> Let's not homes. put this in our Glad time capsules. They say when the student is ready, the master appears. <laughs> yeah, all the S and M gear. Yeah. Oh my Every god. Every boy dreams of. Man's best friend. Is it so, okay to call yeah. her a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> What's that, Lassie? Timmy's in the well. <laughs> you want to do weird sex tricks to him? Okay, boy. It's a girl. <laughs> it's a girl. Lassie's it's no a girl. longer good the enough. The actor was a boy. Yeah, it's no longer good enough just to be gay. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you really have to outdo the next level. I just, do you, you sit, like, levels. literally, they're sitting there talking. I mean, just what is this? Like, it's this just, is normal. Like, they're dressed up as a dog with leather chokers and the ball gag with the hull. Like, every kid has to go through a PowerPoint to tell their parents they want a dog. I'm, I'm going to walk it. I'm going to feed it. I will brush it. I will f it. I will. <laughs> it. <laughs> it is Whoa. So, that's not what Sarah Hard. McLaughlin had in <laughs> mind. Hard bleep on oh that. It's just so funny to me. They want this completely both ways. Yeah. The yeah, trans. Exactly. If you look at the comments, and the yeah. people are going, "Hey, whatever you want to do to live your truth." And in the same thing, by the way, it is. It's transgender. I think male to female yeah. or female to male. So, so who'd have thought that? Surprise! You'd keep on going down that slippery slope <laughs> into living as a dog. And uh, he says, "You know, puppy play." And she goes, "Well." Or he goes, I don't know. Just, what, what, just, just hang, hang me from the what, gallows whatever, for saying the wrong thing. I don't care matter, anymore. Whatever. whatever. Yeah, just, just do it. Uh, and he says, she says, like, well, no, actually, I'm a real dog. But then later, going, well, let's just play. It's like, oh, you're a real dog? Yeah, but that's a crime. <laughs> no, no, I mean, not a real dog because he still has sex with me, you know. But you know, just, <laughs> well, if, we, if we could just treat these people as crazy, if they were, if they were okay with like, yeah, I'm kind of psychotic, I'd be okay with that. But they're saying, no, I'm completely normal. Well, no, we've, been, normal we've incentivized mental illness. Yes. I just hope Michael Vick kills this person. <laughs> We can put them in the ring. Dog fighting when it's actually good. Michael yeah. Vick doesn't kill anybody. They Aww. always had a choice. It was tryouts. <laughs> <laughs> um, who let the dogs out? Who? <laughs> you're saying dog. You're just well, saying dog-related well, title. Yeah, that's just getting that's a little lazy. Snoop that's doggy right, dog. Yeah. <laughs> he's not. He's just Snoop now. Cleveland I don't think he's dog, dog name. It's like, boys, it Puff Snoop Daddy, Lion. P Diddy, then just Diddy. Yeah. yeah, they keep changing. Can you just now? I think the he's dead. Sean Combs. That's bad marketing. Sean Combs. Uh, so I want to make sure I get the story Puppy. right. So she's a male to female transgender before becoming a dog. So it's just this complete concoction of perversion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. It's a witch's brew of screwed up. And what's crazy <laughs> to me is what, right now we're actually you know you, you know we're, we're trying to say this is absurd. Yeah. Yeah. But how do you get to say this? We were just talking yesterday about Jazz Jennings. Was it yeah. yesterday or uh, no? Yesterday was yeah. Devil's Advocate. Two days ago, with Two days Jazz ago, Jennings yeah. Yeah. was talking about you know this little mishap where it came apart. Talking about his, her, her penis or his penis to a girl. I'm now I'm confused. His penis. Jazz Jennings is a boy to right, woman. Yes. So they have to slice it in half, invert it. Banana split that whole business, oh, and you have to make sure there's enough tissue so that you can do that. Inject yourself full of cancerous estrogen. We know what it yeah. does to the male body when injected in an excess amounts. And this person then still, by the way, doesn't change their chromosomes. Doesn't change the fact that the body tries to close it as a womb. Yeah. And then they say, "Oh, I'm a w-, and we all go along with like, oh yes, clearly this is a this is a healthful process." No, you don't get to draw. Every so here's the point: everyone has a line. You don't get to draw the line on someone putting yeah. on S and M gear, walking around like a Tamagotchi <laughs> or a Nano Pet. <laughs> when you allow Jazz Jennings, they are yeah. both equally absurd. You don't get to draw your own line. By the way, there's more to this. I actually spoke with my fiance, who's in the medical field, about this, and apparently, you have to keep inserting something into it. Yes. And it what? has to gradually be bigger. Because it's clo- and, it closes itself as a wound, a beca- sex change. It, and because oh, it, you're still thinking about the dog. No, yeah. that would be, oh, that, yeah, that would be yeah. animal abuse. This yeah. is the filleting of the penis. We'll go back to something more sane. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, and, how is it not an illness if you require surgery and a lifetime well, of treatment? Hold on a second. His fiance yeah. is a nurse. I want to hear Yeah, yeah, yeah. She basically said, so you have to insert a, a dildo or some sort, whatever, right? And you have to keep Whoa! It, whoa! Sorry, you can bleep that, I guess. I don't know. And then you have to no, keep it, like, it doesn't produce its own moisture, and so you have to keep it 
I don't like, like that word moisture. Wait, is that yeah. actually a thing? It's a thing. You I knew about the device. I didn't know about the. We're not supposed to. You can't use the word moisture on the show. Yeah, we got to bleep that. Yeah, that's a bleep for sure. <laughs> that's a hard. Not bleep. a bleep. What's the matter with that's you? And something guys? else that really. It's just just like with transgenderism, where Caitlyn Jenner just becomes a walking Barbie doll. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. It's like, hey, I think I'm. A, so all of the stereotypes that we you know have that we have perpetuated as society or a patriarchal society of women. Yeah. That's all these transgenders really attempt to fulfill. They just end up being a walking yeah. stereotype of a woman, but we never call them on that as totally accepted. It's the same That's thing funny. here. These people, they're only attempting to perpetuate the fun stereotype of a dog. At least when, <laughs> when, when Owen and I role play the weekends, we put some commitment into it. Did you take a dump on my laptop? Woof. <laughs> By the way, why was I dressed as a blueberry for some reason? I don't, I don't know. I think you were chewing bubble gum. <laughs> I was in Willy Wonka. We're supposed to. Oh oh. My gosh. I, look, I already feel awkward seeing dogs poop out in the wild. Like they always look over their shoulder at you. Like, why are you looking at me? If I saw a human being doing this, dressed yeah. up as a dog, I don't know what I would do. Hopper doesn't look you in the eye. <laughs> he like, has no fear. Like a Hodgman. Yeah. yeah. I don't even <laughs> like the word long. poop. I don't like the word either. <laughs> it like it grosses me out. Yeah, I know. Really? You wouldn't fare well in Germany. Uh, <laughs> or Asia. San Francisco. Okay. So everyone everyone got all the all the, all the wiggles out on this topic? Yeah. Are we good? Yeah, we're yeah. good. You good? I got one more joke about it if you okay. want to hear it. <laughs> Let me hear it. Uh, this person has to go door to door at Petco to say that they're a sex offender. <laughs> 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 Who let the dogs out? <laughs> Snoop Doggy Dog. That's it. That's yeah. all I got. Look at them bitches. Yeah. Lil Bow Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Lil Romeo. Yeah. Well, now you're not even dogs. You're just saying things with Lil. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so it this happened. is the topic we're going to be talking about because it's a slow news week, but I think this macro yeah. context matters. Coming off the transgender dog story, uh, Kira Knightley and, and, and Kier, is it Kristen or Kirsten? I always get that wrong. I don't really I care. Don't know. Yeah, uh, no. Made news recently for taking issue with the classic Disney princess film. So both kind of, of took course. different approaches, but again, if you Google Kira yeah. Knightley, if you Google Kristen Dell, you can see just just the laundry list of feminist complaints and male bashing. Uh, but in this instance, they were both very specific about the Disney films they hate and why. Let's let's start with Knightley's problems with I think Little Mermaid and Cinderella. Cinderella, mm -hmm. and uh, because you know she she waits around for a rich guy to rescue her. Don't rescue yourself, right. obviously. Wrong. Right. Uh, <laughs> Well, of course, Ellen's going to clap. No man has ever rescued her. No. I really like not her. even her father. Uh, but Little Mermaid. I mean, the songs are great, but do not give your voice up for a man. Hello. Wow. Hello. Oh, so, yeah. Those are... So, you know, I mean, but, but the problem with... I mean, The Little Mermaid. I love The Little Mermaid, so I'm having that. That one's a little tricky one, but no, but I'm, I'm keeping G to it. Give your voice up for a man. Didn't Ariel gain... Fucking legs? <laughs> That's a like pretty good trade. It's a trade-off. Yeah. That's a great trade. You it's, can walk on land But now. by the way, good bravery going on a lesbian's talk show <laughs> bashing men. Good I do love her accent, Karen though. I will say that. I... I I'm going to be one over. Uh, all right. So this was followed by Kristen Bell. I think this is an overlay because there's no clip of this. Uh, finding Snow White problematic, saying that she wasn't comfortable with Disney films. These are some quotes from Kristen Bell. Every time we close Snow White and I look at my girls, I ask... Don't you think it's weird that Snow White didn't ask the old witch why she needed to eat the apple? <laughs> or where she got that apple? I say, I would never take food from a stranger, would you? And, okay. Mm. okay. This is, by the way, yeah. in the article, it comes from parents.com, where she talks about why she's uncomfortable with the Disney film. That's the point! <laughs> the point to it, the witch, would, that is the stranger danger. <laughs> it's a conversation wow. starter. <laughs> it's like Aesop Fable. They just, they can't write, what are you expecting, to follow the bouncing Aesop along the bottom of the screen to learn the le It's your job as a parent, where a witch goes, eat the apple, and she starts convulsing in a seizure for you to go, see, bad things happen <laughs> with strangers. You're, are you too stupid to have children? How is this a problem? That's the point. Well, like, the, the hilarious part is that she was a princess in Frozen. She was Anna. Yeah. She was well, the voice yeah, of Anna. Yeah, I know. That's what she's trying to say. The old ones are bad. The new ones are of good. Of course, right? She's trying yeah. to yeah. shut the door exactly. on it. Like, she's like, Jack and Jill went up the hill. To, I got nothing. I hate these people <laughs> so much. <laughs> it's like the whole point. And Kevin Spacey says, point. tell me more about Jack. Did he make it down the hill? He stayed up there. He stayed, stayed up. Did he, he break his crown? <laughs> Did he break his crown? <laughs> What's a crown? <laughs> did he get it fixed? Did he break? Did he break my, my crown? Is polishing? Stop! Stop! Oh. Stop! You know what? You you saw the rod. You bought a ticket anyway. Um, <laughs> then Kristen Bell she goes on to add, "Don't you think that it's weird that the prince kisses Snow White without her permission? Because you cannot kiss someone when they're sleeping." Uh, congratulations, Kristen. You've completely missed the point of fairy tales. 
Okay. This is unreal. And this is just the, the macro issue that now all of a sudden there's a problem with this idea of princesses and princes and yeah. a dragon. This, we were talking mm. about this with Jocko. There's a great book called Wild at Heart. It's human yeah. nature. But now it's become the movement, just like me too. Everyone's afraid to speak out. So Disney's been inundated with feminist complaints lately. And unfortunately, they've been crafting more modern fairy tales uh, in response. Princess, we are here to save you. No. No, she can save herself. She looks at you look plenty empowered. I'm pretty sure she's got a handle on it. Yeah, it's not because we're men. It's we uh, just wanna uh, Oh! Woo! Sides! Sides, are we doing a redo of the English patient? That took a hard turn. That's a burn victim out there. Oh, Ariel's being taken by eight-legged Paladine! Mm -hmm. Eight-legged Paladine, leave her alone! Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ariel, do you need help? Do you need help, Ariel? D Ariel, do you need help? We can't hear you! We can't help her if she doesn't, no, she has she to she doesn't actively ask for it. She has, Title nine, bro. Uh, Bowser! Me, Bowser's buddy. taking Princess Peach to another castle! You stay away from- No, Peach. don't- She's got it. She's gonna, she's gonna handle all the oh. castles. Uh, I'll join in. Me too. That's uh- Yeah, me for That's the Devil's Triangle. You mean like the drinking game? Nope. <laughs> I, I should, should have seen that coming. <laughs> It's, it's oh we Hollywood now thinks a fairy tale is just a snappy story from a gay guy. Yeah. <laughs> so I just thought that one out. Wow. All story. right. Well, let's try How many of the dad the jokes are we going to do here? No, it's, it's oh, little goodness. boys like rescuing princesses and little girls like being pretend rescued. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. it. It's yeah, as simple as that. But, but, but here's something else that people don't notice, and we'll get into each kind of We'll go through a few examples of Disney. I think it's important to get into the specifics. Yeah. Now, why does this matter? Why are you spending so much time on Disney? For the same reason that people complain about there not being enough black people in, in yeah. films, and then I laughed my ass off in Beauty and the Beast when they had black <laughs> yeah. people in powdered wigs yeah, exactly. in the yeah. 1740s and hundreds. Yeah. yeah. Like, come on. There's a give and take. There aren't enough female. For the same reason I get mad, they said there aren't enough female directors. You see the, the, the whatever, one of the producers at Bloomhouse. So there frankly just aren't that many female yeah. directors out. And they go, this it's is from a, Vulture. And they say, well, we have a hefty list of women who would be qualified. And they have the one woman who did <laughs> Monster and Wonder Woman. I'm friends with her. She's cool, too. And then the others are like, Patty this Jenkins. woman directed a bunch of X-Files episodes. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's, Literally, and there was, the, the list was three. It was three. <laughs> <laughs> and so my problem here is just that we're saying all people have to be all things, and we have to change anything retroactively that might be considered offensive. And I don't even think there's anything offensive about this. Yeah. If you look at the way these women, these female princesses in Disney are portrayed, they're always portrayed as capable, but submissive, like Snow White, Ariel, Cinderella. Uh, and then the men are always portrayed as strong men who are gentle and loving with the woman. Men who will slay the yeah. beast, uh, yeah. but gentle. With, so firm with the bad guys. Like this, That's actually how we're called to be as husbands and wives, biblically. And it's also what's best for society. It's compliment. There's nothing the wrong with right that. There. There's nothing the wrong. And that's the part of the Bible that most people skip over because it says, wives, be submissive to your husbands. But right after that, it says, husbands, love like your wife and one. lay down your life for her. Right. There's nothing wrong yep. with laying down your life for your wife, okay? Yeah. It's okay. She should be submissive in that point. Then it goes on to say, wife, lay down for your husband. Oh. Yeah. Repeat yeah. it. That's the <laughs> All day, er day. Yeah. Somewhere well, in the back. Black says that in Revelation. <laughs> <laughs> and then I saw before me a no, man on a pale oh, horse. No, sacrilegious, stop it. <laughs> saying all day, every day. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, or Cinderella. Let's use the example the of Cinderella because that's what yeah. the first one. Cinderella is a love story. Yeah. I, I actually, when I see Cinderella, I don't know about what you think. I, I see it as a, a good example of a man helping a woman out of an abusive relationship. Of course. The step That's exactly what the it step is. Yeah. Women really? are more likely to be abusive, by the way. Emotionally abusive. Oh, that's yeah, more yeah, common yeah. than men. I'm like, oh, that's a good thing. They're the real villains. That's they're, they're <laughs> the, the metaphorical right dragons, by the way. Prince Charming, yeah. both in Cinderella and as this kind of archetype, again, gentle, caring, no tolerance for evil cruelty. Yeah. He seeks out the goodness in Cinderella. And this is, again, Cinderella, look at Cinderella. She's very capable. Mm -hmm. She's smart. She's pretty. Uh, but she's submissive. She's not offing the stepsisters, which most of us would do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's the, that's, that's that's the, the appropriate That's response. the prince's job to come in <laughs> and do that because it shows... Complementarianism, right? Like a like a BFF sort of a locket. Yeah, we compliment yeah. each other. We, you got gaps, I got gaps. Together, we fill gaps. <laughs> so true. And by the way, she I also she uses her one wish to be proactive and fix the situation. And then the prince is looking, saying, "Oh, listen, I'm going to use this slipper just to guarantee that I don't wind up with those bitches." <laughs> right. It's a good. It's good all around. Speaking of which, hit the notification bell uh, because subscriptions don't mean a whole lot on YouTube. And join Mug Club if you're enjoying the show. And uh, 
Hopefully you're enjoying the show. Uh, <laughs> Lottermanscotter.com slash mug club. You get the show every single day. It helps support the show, uh, of course. Yeah. You can also subscribe on iTunes. Please rate us because uh, it helps yeah. uh, people listen to it. I, I kind of want to know where feminists want us to fall down right now because we're this toxic masculinity thing that's being portrayed out there in the culture is that men are too overbearing. And then you get this prince in these shows, right, that is actually not overbearing at all. He's chivalrous. He serves. Yeah. He helps people. He defeats the dragon, like you said. He does Heroic. Where do you want us? You're telling us that well, we're really bad in one way and then the opposite direction... There's no safe quarter there either. What the do we do? The prince is part of the one percent. <laughs> well, of course. Well, well, the reason who I has a crystal slipper? <laughs> that filthy <laughs> son of a bitch. He stole it. How many Tom's shoes could he have given to children in the African savannah <laughs> by pawning the one gold slipper? Wait, wait, Savannah. I think it's Sahara, not Savannah. Savannah's in Georgia. So. Well, there no, are, I, the African <laughs> there isn't there. Savannah? I don't have no. I don't have Savannah, Savannah in Africa. <laughs> I'm straining with it, Gilbert. <laughs> Go. Well, it's uh, this is why I know it's nonsense. Is is the thing they promote are insane, like Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like they have no problem with what? that. That's like fifty counts of rape. That's <laughs> that's that's an. That's, an that's just two people having a good time. That's an. A aim bullet oral. doesn't cost as much as a freaking crystal slipper. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they don't want good guys. They don't no. want the prince. They want they want a, a billionaire to put you in a red room and, and simulate rape. And, I mean, that's an insane movie. But his yeah. name is Christian. Which is, by the way, another funny thing to me that people... Act, first off, I'm much more inclined to believe the Devil's Triangle. We didn't talk about this a ton on air. Is it a yeah. drinking game? Because you're writing yeah. about it publicly in your yearbook. And again, we're using Urban I mean, Dictionary from the last five years to try and apply it. That, unless, yeah. unless Kavanaugh had a DeLorean. <laughs> and even then, yeah. Devil's Triangle doesn't mean rape. Since when does Hollywood care about sexual perversion? <laughs> yeah. Like, when right. do you, right. you put it in every right. single movie? Yeah. They're obsessed yeah. with sodomy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's crazy how words will switch. Like, square used to be a compliment back in the day, and then it became an insult. Yeah. Like, back, like 60 years ago, if you said someone was square, it meant they were a good guy. They were squared up. Yeah. And then it became like a nerd. It's like, <laughs> words just keep changing yeah. and changing. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. Like, f*** it. So the next one oh, is true. Snow White. That used to mean that uh, postmenopausal woman with no children or a very drunk man because it meant a burdensome person. It's fascinating. Yeah. I knew bundle of sticks. Bundle of sticks. Yeah, yeah because that was like the metaphor. You're like, it's on your back uh, like a burden. Oh. Yeah, and it also yeah. meant gays because yeah, they have kids. Say, yeah. yeah. See, I, I just always use it for gays. <laughs> so the next example uses Snow White. <laughs> We're going to get letters. Snow White. Let's go to Snow White. Okay, so the princess in Snow White hides from an evil witch uh, who wants right. to kill Snow White, right, in order to be the most beautiful of them all. Kind of sounds like the Amy Schumer story from earlier. <laughs> She's in a puddle now. Uh, <laughs> that's the point, the point is, uh, they're bitching about kissing someone who's sleeping. It, yeah. The context does matter. Context over content. Keep in mind that Snow White has already fallen in love with the prince. Here's a clip. Evidence. One All right. I have one Singing. Oh, down here, girl. He, he's, he's clearly a fag, but she's not in on it yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, she doesn't, doesn't know. know. Look. Look at this. Aw. I love it. She's into it. Okay. Yep. This means I want to bear your children, okay? <laughs> yeah, you this is the equivalent that. to consent. I don't care what happens after. No, but the point is, she likes... I know people are going to say, you think if a woman does this, it gives you to rape her? <laughs> yeah, so the point is... And by the way, if there were any doubt as to how she felt about the prince, she goes on to sing about meeting her prince again. Sing the same way back. That's enough. That's enough. That's, 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 I've had enough of that Snow White thing. But th the point is here, I mean, it's, it's, it could not be clearer that she likes the prince. Yes. Yeah. And she if you want to complain him. about something weird, the girl has a midget fetish. She, she's hanging around with seven midgets, one with a drinking problem, one with narcolepsy. I'm pretty sure one of them was bipolar. Like, there's a lot weird with this film. They looked a little gay, too, with their sitting in like, oh. Yeah. One was a cokehead, sneezy. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> they prefer to be called People McNuggets, though. I think we've talked about that. I think uh, Little Troopers. Yeah, need to clear that up. Little Troopers. But People Snow McNuggets, White, it's what the... Snow White was one 1,024th Native American, though, so she wasn't oh. that yeah, white. So that means it's okay to yeah. rape her, I guess, is what you're saying. Um, I have no idea where this went. Scalp, I guess? It's okay to yeah, scalp yeah, it? Yeah, Consent yeah, for okay. scalping? No. Uh, okay. Oh, Here's something else that people don't remember. 
Snow White, when the prince kisses Snow White, by the way, he's been seeking, he's been, you know, he's gone through the witch, right? This yeah. is fact, yeah. It's not always a dragon, but the point is he fought somebody off to rescue the princess. There is yes. sacrifice. This is another con constant that we see, not only through all literary work of fiction, pretty much, but particularly in Disney films. Uh, Disney films, there's sacrifice at the altar of self, effectively. You're yeah. sacrificing yeah. something that would obviously be good for for someone else. That's part of a relationship. That's actually a good lesson. So the prince has sacrificed uh, his safety in a lot of ways, and obviously he's basically leaving the safety of the kingdom, searching for Snow White. When he finds her, by the way, he doesn't think she's sleeping. He thinks she's dead. <laughs> Looks dead to me. Yeah. Hold on a second. We have to blur this. Here comes the rape. Oh, oh, jeez. Oh, oh, Hashtag me too. <laughs> rape. <laughs> Here it is. Oh. See, he's sad. Oh, they all... They're sad. We're sad. We did have to edit out though, because <laughs> no one grumpy's just going, ah, the hell's the difference? <laughs> you, you remember when uh, kissing used to be safe, right? You could you could be dancing with a girl at a party or something like that, and you're feeling the vibe. She doesn't like pull away. You kiss her, and you weren't accused of rape. Do you remember that? Now we have dating apps that have consent that you can actually click on, both of you, so yeah. that you have consent in writing wow, before you right. do something like that. How did you know? Is that, that real? That's absolutely uh, is real. That real? Google it. I, yeah, I, that app I, is I missed real. I'm not all kidding. of it. Man. There's a consent I, app. Is right it not now. consent when you sign up for the dating app? I thought consent was. What like, did you think you were signing up for? MySpace? <laughs> no, no, no. It's an app just for consent. It's not a dating app. You, no. Oh, it's like a form. Yes. Like an e-sign no. form. Take video. You can you can select yes. I get my iPad to this. Yeah. How romantic <sighs> is that? By the way, I'd like. We're to planning you, second I'm base, also, third. Yeah. <laughs> not anything weird, right? Is it a negotiation? General or a fine? My okay. form. <laughs> I, I think we're all starting to just realize that sexual being a sexual conservative is the way to go. Like well, people yeah. can't handle this. It's not good for women. Right. They're almost like reverting yeah. back to, to old school morality because this Tinder thing is making them feel like a soft rape all the time. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. they're not made for it. It's a fact. I believed the lie when I was in my 20s. It's not true. And my, my wife, by the way, if I kissed her sweetly while she was sleeping, she'd be fired up. She'd be like, oh, that's yeah. really nice. But usually I just go get coffee and do my own thing. <laughs> usually I just have sex with mine. Oh, nice. Yeah, well, he's, it's not, it's, he's it's winning. Not, you're, they're your wife. Yeah. Wife. Doesn't matter. You can do it. Wakefulness does not equal consent. Um, <laughs> no, it's true. If you kiss my your wife, wife sleeps like this. Does she sleep like this? Yes, that's why. That I'm means like, no. Very defensive. That's an X. <laughs> very defensive. <laughs> oh God. You have to give it again, Garrett. I, I cut it. I cut it. What are your wife? There you go. All right. Yeah, that's, that's how I kiss. By the, the way. Yeah. All right. But so basically, you treat your wife like a little brother, where you're doing the loogie, <laughs> and you keep yeah. sucking it back. You're like, is it sexy? <laughs> All right. Let's go to the next example. We have to move. We have to move this train along. Little Mermaid, as they yeah. they use it. So the Little Mermaid is basically about a young woman choosing a different Love life. That movie. Uh, despite the expectations of her. Yeah. Feminists see this as a woman giving up her voice for a man. Again, sacrifice is necessary. It was, it was her choice. Yes. And by the way, it wasn't like a complete sacrifice. She treated it a voice for legs. Yeah. yeah. And she was singing underwater. Yeah. In here? Underwater? She sold out her own dad. Birds. Her Didn't her dad get, like, killed or something because of her choices? I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> You're know. getting too deep. It's like feminists today. It was like, why did she, didn't she, did, did she have to give up her job? What? She had quadruplets. <laughs> she exchanged a job for the joy and wonder of motherhood. Right. Would there are trade-offs, yeah. especially right. yeah. in relationships. There are trade-offs, by the way, from the, 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 the not the prince. Is it a prince in, in Little Mermaid? The guy, the guy yeah, with the, the guy, puffy shirt. You know. I think he's a prince. He's going after her after, after <laughs> you know, he's going after her. I mean, she, she, he, I mean, I'm pretty sure he lost his inheritance. The it guy's getting busy with a fish. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a puppy shirt, he's a prince. And also, it's kind of ableism to think that you can't have a voice and you're not cool. It's I it wish was, I didn't have a voice. That's a good point. I yeah. talk too much. I wish that someone would take my voice. If someone could, take your, voice, if someone could take your voice or your legs, what would you keep? I, I would keep legs. Yeah. Really? But I then you would be able to make a living. I'd keep legs. I would become really creative. <laughs> <laughs> because I always, like, I always yeah. like the dudes in, in movies like, uh, that don't talk a lot. And I talk yeah. so much. Yeah. Like John Wick, it's great. He just doesn't talk. He just loves his dog and killing Russian people. <laughs> and every, everybody thinks you're really cool, too. in the U.S. Yeah. They all, yes, think, you're really they all cool. think you're really cool. <laughs> no way. Uh, <laughs> so here's the thing. It's not only content through Disney. Hey, again, I want to hear what you think about this. I mean, uh, we have uh, five women who I polled here at Ladder with Crowder. Yeah. And... Uh, all of them agreed, except on a, maybe one or two different points. Like, no, when I was young, I played, I played a princess. Yeah. I wanted to be rescued. Yeah. I, I, and here's one thing, too. H hold your nose here, because here comes the cold water. The idea uh -oh. that young girls should be taught to simply rescue themselves, by the way, as Kristen Bell, it's not always great either. You know why? Because they can't. 
<laughs> Just like men, if left to their own devices, women would not be able to physically protect themselves. Just like men would not do well taking care of themselves without the support. It's complementarianism. Disney yeah. inadvertently recognized the virtue in traditional heterosexual relationships mm -hmm. and the values that each person brings uniquely therein. Guess, 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 guess what? If Bowser wants to kidnap Peach, He's kidnapping Peach! He's a freaking dragon that breathes fire. She's a 120-pound princess with a sun umbrella. There's no chance in hell she's getting out alive. Now you toss in a couple of hairy-backed human fire hydrant-sized plumbing Italians, the numbers game increases a little bit. I love that game, by the way. It's right so there, fantastic. Right there, <laughs> Which game, Mario? Mario, yes, that was epic. A guy goes and rescues the princess every single yeah. time. And here's the thing, but she's always in another castle. That's, That's true. Very annoying. Every time. How dare she? Uh, and one other thing too, that really time. bothers me is, is not only can you not look at previous words like we talked about Devil's Triangle with yeah. today's definition, a lot of people think that fiction is up to interpretation. That's part of what is enjoyable about fiction is that you can kind of take from it what you want. I understand yeah. that. That being said, not all interpretations are as valid. So if a feminist is looking at this saying, well, hold on a second, I'm watching Disney, I'm seeing, I'm seeing Beauty and the Beast, and I'm seeing a woman who's locked in, no, I'm seeing a strong, intelligent, nerdy woman right. who's also getting stuff and sacrifices her well-being for her father, right, to save his life, and then ultimately she sacrifices herself for the beast, for the beast's love, then the beast ends up sacrificing himself against Gaston for the woman. This is all about self-sacrifice. Yeah. This is all about people actually being brave and dying to oneself. As we know as Christians, you die to the flesh every single day. That's what this is about. And I know that they maybe didn't necessarily mean it to be that deep, but it's not fair to look at these old Disney films through today's lens and act as though your interpretation is just as valid. No, because you know what, if you were to ask the screenwriter, if you were to ask the author, if you were to say, hold on, was this meant to be uh, an anti-woman screen? Was this really meant to, <laughs> and they, the guy would say, no, it's what Steven said. <laughs> It was, yeah, it was just Princess Damsel. Yeah, no, what he said is correct. It's just their own confirmation. That bias was again. the intent of the author. Yeah. And to try and act as though it was. And the reason we're doing it is because we want to act as though there's some kind of conspiratorial patriarchy right. behind Disney films. <laughs> now, granted, the phallic symbol on top of the castle on the old Little Mermaid VHS, that's it's true. a little messed up. Yeah, there's wieners in it. That's, that's a wieners. Yeah, that is there's absolutely some wieners. Multiple, multiple wieners. There's no multiple wieners. Make a penis. That's a penis. Multiple erections in oh, Little the Mermaid. Erection. Too. Yes, I forgot about that one. That's pretty creepy. Really creepy. <laughs> it was Kevin Spacey. Yeah, why are they not complaining about that? <laughs> That's the problem, is the wieners. <laughs> little boys need a princess to rescue, and little girls want a boy to rescue them. Doesn't mean that they're helpless, by the way. Here's something else. Let me ask you this. Let me put it this way. You get home, okay? And let's say your wife, for most men. Okay, let's just go with men. Sorry, I'm not going to try and act as though it's the same on both sides. So, for a man, you come home, your wife makes dinner. Did you need her to do that? No. Do you like it? Yeah. Did you want it? Yes. Woman, you come home. Woman. <laughs> Woman, you come home. Your man's got you flowers. Did you need him to get you flowers? Does that mean that you're helpless? Does that mean that you're weak? No. It means he did something nice for you. And he's probably more effective at getting you a surprise gift of flowers than you can for yourself, unless you're a paranoid schizophrenic like Bernie Sanders. He's the only one who's able to surprise you with flowers. It's a nice thing. Just like somebody fighting off the dragon. It's a nice thing. Just like a woman sacrificing something for her man because she loves him greater than the item that she is sacrificing. It's a good thing. Instead, we say, oh, these things are bad. Let's go put ball gags on our dogs. Let's come back after this with James O'Keefe and Dean Kane. I can't do this. We interrupt this program with breaking news on Louder with Power. I'm Perry Malfoy. Canada has now legalized marijuana across the country, thrusting the nation into the international spotlight as a national experiment. Though the future remains uncertain, economists are forecasting Canada to remain an unproductive and mostly inconsequential country. We'll keep you abreast as this story unfolds. For breaking news on Louder with Crowder, I'm Perry Mahathai. It is Fly. Our next guest yeah. is Fly, and he's very busy. He's got to fly. Gosh, Owen yeah, really ruins me with the puns. I'm tear with the yeah. puns and the play on words. Uh, you know him. Project Veritas is where, of course, you can support him. ProjectVeritas.com. You can follow him on the Twitter at James O'Keefe. The third, the third. Now, James. People obviously know who you are. Is that spelled with three eyes, capital I's? Yeah, my dad's yep. James O'Keefe. Yep. My grandfather's James O'Keefe. So I'm Roman numeral three. James O'Keefe. I I I. Roman numeral three. Okay, on good. Twitter. So, what if someone enters in James O'Keefe and the actual number three on Twitter? Do you it come won't up? Work. 
be a different uh, – that will be someone who is <laughs> Some pretending to be me. I'm not verified on Twitter, Stephen. I've got 460,000 followers, but Jack Dorsey has not verified me on Twitter yet. Hold on a second. Let me check this out. If I type in James O'Keefe, the th- yeah, it's just a Twitter egg with a dick pic. There you go. <laughs> it seems as though you should yeah. appear before that. All right. Uh, there's a segue. Why? Why go. is well? You know what? First off, let's let's go yeah. to a clip of your latest video. It's making the rounds. There's been a lot of uh, a lot a lot of fallout from it. Uh, for those right. who aren't aware, here's a short clip. So you would be on board with with bump, the bump stock? Of course, of course. Bump stocks. Oh, I've voted high capacity for, max. I've I've voted for most of those things before. So for a ban? Oh yeah. Great. Oh, yeah. Great. Oh, yeah. I asked her while she was here, and she she told me she supports an AR ban mm-hmm. and bump stock ban and a high capacity magazine ban. But I don't ever hear her say it. Because <laughs> she has a bunch of Republican voters. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want them to. They're not going to look into her. Like, All right. they're just not. There we go. That's interesting. We, people can go, of course, uh, projectgratis.com. Go to YouTube. I'm sure there are plenty of places where they can find it as long as you are not yeah. deplatformed. Uh, right. well, what's the, what's the, why does Claire McCaskill hate you so much? It seems that the reaction here has been really severe. Well, because, well, the reaction, we, we caught, we've done this two stories, one in Tennessee, one in Missouri. And in these red states, these Democrats have to appeal to moderate voters. So we talk to their staff. In some cases, we talk to the candidate. And they say, well, we really have to mislead voters. We have to essentially lie, is what the McCaskill campaign staffer says, to get elected. Mm-hmm. We have, we're just like Obama, but, quote, people can't know that. So we, as we do, covertly recorded this. We, and, and now McCaskill wants to appoint a special prosecutor to criminalize what I have done. Yeah. So instead of the expose, it's now a, a crime for me to do this. And now... She said that her opponent was involved. That's outrageous. I responded. So all this fallout, Stephen, and every local TV station is covering it. And there's a debate. There's a there's a Senate debate tonight in Missouri. So this whole thing is sort of blown up. Um, Do you think she's still just a little bit upset that she obviously represents a previous slave state? Do you think there's some do you think she's just it's just some guilt bubbling over? I think there's a lot of b- bizarre dynamics. I'm, I'm not from, you know, I'm, I'm from New Jersey. I'm, I'm new to the Missouri thing. But I think that the politics of Missouri are so bizarre because people in the Democratic Party are very moderate mm-hmm. and they have to kind of deceive certain voters. And they're all admitting this. It's sort of the political reality. Well, it's the but political reality of the Midwest. Do you think it's because it's sort of that Midwest appeal where you have kind of the, the, the workers, sort of this union mentality, this sort of beltway, uh, kind of traditionally blue, blue dog Democrats, but they're not really the dyed in the wool leftists like you would have in San Francisco or in Portland. And so the Democrat politicians kind of try to, they try to fake as though they represent that. Do you think that's a portion of it? I think that's I, I think that that is correct. I think that there are certain states like Missouri and there are dying parts of the Democratic Party. And 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 in order to get elected into the Senate as a Democrat in that state, you have to mislead or at least they think they do. So we recorded all these staffers. It's their words, not mine. Again, I'm not like Bob Woodward. I don't relay anonymous quoted sources from other sources six months after the fact. I only report it if you can see it and hear it coming out of the person's own mouth. So she's upset. Claire McCaskill issued this bizarre statement um, that I'm affiliated with the, her opponent, which is absolutely categorically false. And, and then this guy, Howley, denied it. And now she's calling for a special prosecutor. It's blown up. And uh, for, special prosecutor for what? what? What crime are they trying to say that you've committed here? Because it's a single party consent state. The, 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 the ambiguous fraud. I committed fraud. Hmm. It's, re- it's legal to record in Missouri. It's a yeah. one-party consent state. There's no duty to keep confidential. In fact, I would argue I have a civic duty to make public yeah. the revelations that they, people were saying. But this is just what they do, Stephen. I'm a controversial figure. People don't like being exposed. It's irrefutable nature of it. It's just so damning. And I think it's just an incredibly damning piece of video that we've got. And, and the, the, the knee-jerk reaction is to just put him in jail, put O'Keefe in jail. It's like, well, for what? It's not it's not criminal to record someone, especially if they're saying these things and it needs to be it needs to be disseminated as far as I'm concerned. And you've done this quite a bit. Have you ever had someone just go, that's one for you, James. You got me. You <laughs> caught me. Just sort of come clean after. Has that ever actually happened? I, I, yes, it, it has. It, it's a sort of fascinating question because I think once in a while, even people on the left, they'll send me private emails. The New York Times or The Washington Post. 
um, they do send me private emails, private messages, and they'll say, "That's how did you?" One of them said, "How did you get that guy to talk?" Yeah, <laughs> it's like they're they're impressed by what we're able to show because if you if you're a traditional reporter, your sources are either anonymous or they're on the record, and and they're not gonna be as honest and they're not gonna be as transparent. So you, when you have when you have campaign officials saying we have to lie to get elected, it, it's so it's so damning. And in a state like Missouri, the, the, what she's saying banning semi-automatic rifles in New Jersey or California or New York that might sound like a like a typical. You cannot say that no. in Missouri and and get elected. And even so what, you could not say it in New Jersey if people in New Jersey could understand what semi-automatic rifle meant or right. read it. But uh, right. particularly as it relates to, semi people think semi-automatic, they think it's burst fire. No, it just means pretty much every rifle that's not a pump action shotgun or lever action rifle. So even then, it's really just because a lot of these people who are bicoastal, they're not entirely aware of what these what these uh, these terms mean. No, I was talking more as, as far as someone you've actually stung, I guess, yeah. Sting, oh, is it like hanged, hung, or is a sting, yeah. sting? Uh, with a sting <laughs> operation, any actual subject, has any one of them just said, you know what, James got me. All right, I'm I'm bowing out here because I did say it. That is true. Have they ever? Well, you know, Steve, I did. Ted, I did confront. In. I did confront. Like you know, 60 Minutes. Mike Wallace used to do this. I've started to do this now, where I confront the subject on the street. Mm -hmm. So w McCaskill's guy, Nick Starost. I don't know if you have this clip handy, but I actually walked up to him up, as he's walking into his cam. I, I campaign. I had my iPad and I showed him the footage. He just kept saying the same thing. I'm not authorized to speak to the press. I'm not authorized to speak to the press. I said, Nick. You already are in the press in every local, literally every local TV station, KTVI, KCWE, ABC News, every TV station in Missouri is playing you right now. What do you have to say? He said, I can't talk to the press. He's an NBC. I, I think there is, I, I don't know if they're going to fire these people or if they're going to stand behind them. They have admitted they've said what they've said. So in this case, no, they're not. They're not acknowledging that they that that um, you got me. They have not acknowledged that in this case. Yeah, I haven't seen anyone acknowledge that ever at any point. I'm just curious, you know, because it happened with with uh, with us. We do this crowd or confront segment. It's not really going after politicians, but inaccuracy in the media or people who threatened, you know, to kill me. Uh, and so then we find them. And one was this writer for the Austin Chronicle who de described an entire video that was uploaded, but never actually uh, uploaded. The video, put the video, embedded it in her article. And that's because she omitted certain key details, like the fact that the other subject in the video uh, actually plotted to slash my tires. And I said, you know, you write in your article that the six foot three Stephen, you know, 220 pound Stephen Crowder approaches this, and you make really kind of create this sort of victim and villain uh, scenario. But why didn't you show the video where, where she says right. she did plot? She's like, well, uh, you, do you want me to quote you on that? I said, <laughs> no, don't, don't quote me on that. It's in the video you're describing. The person says it there. Of course, that's me writing that I want to slash your tires. Oh, so would you like me to quote you on that, Stephen? No, I don't. Don't quote anything. Just don't, don't yeah. hide the video. It is amazing the kind of, I one time, I don't know if you ever had this because people often talk about, well, this is misleading and it's unethical for James O'Keefe. Right. I, I, I think it was Daily Beast. I can't remember who. So Daily Beast, don't sue me if I'm just, it was some site like that. They were doing right. some article, and they asked me about something. I said, well, is this, is this off the record? They said, yeah, it's off the record. And then it appeared in the article. So I said, well, that's good. Now I understand how that works. They'll just lie about it. And it happens all no, the time. You're they, honest. Uh, I have a whole wall in my office. I'm not in my headquarters right now. I'm on the road. But I have a wall, and it's called Wall of Shame. We have gotten journalists to print 300 retractions over the year. My greatest achievement, my crowning achievement in life is when I get – a mainstream journalist to print a retraction. I mean, I've got I've got a Washington Post guy one time to print a retraction about saying that I excluded something from a video. What they're saying now is that I quote make people say things. I love the pretzel wrangling of the journalists here with the spin. He makes people say things. Do newspaper reporters make you say something, or do you just say it? It's yeah. just it's just. I mean, they no. We're living in a very uh, tribal world where no one's ever going to admit fault, but that's the beauty of covert recordings. And then they say it's unethical. Let me just address this for a minute because yeah. I think our world is changing and I think people need to know why this is the future, these, these surreptitious recordings. We never bug a room. We're always next to the person. We have no duty to keep confidential what people tell us no more than when someone, when you write down what someone says, when someone tells you something, you write it down and you share it with the world. Right. But recordings do it more justice. Recordings capture it accurately. And if this is a necessary thing. This is the future of what we're doing. And it's, and it's a brave new world. But the media 
it doubles down. They have no shame. And the only way we, you know, local media is the way we break through. Yeah, that's a good point. I always wondered that when you, you know, you're watching the films or, you know, you have the April O'Neils of the world going, all right, can I get a quote? And they're writing it down in a notepad. I'm going, you couldn't possibly have, you couldn't have written all that down. There's no way. Do you have a, does anyone have a recorder? You know, back then it would have had a whole cassette. Nowadays you have an iPhone. Of course it's going to be more accurate. And you also have proof for somebody else. But uh, as we talk about, the left likes to live in the dark. What do you think is going to happen with this debate? We we have to get going here. And you're, I appreciate you stopping at apparently what is the, the uh, the patriotic equivalent of the Bates Motel, but your internet's giving us a little bit of problems here. What do you yeah. foresee happening I, I, the with a debate? The woman at the, at the desk here, I'm a, you can put that on your wall here. Stephen Crowder quote, <laughs> you're in. That's great. Um, she's sitting right over there. Yeah, so um, I, I will say that the debate tonight is tonight in Missouri. We've gotten a reaction from Steve Bresiden. Steve, we've got, um, we've got a whole bunch of more videos from other Senate races coming out in the coming days ahead. Okay. And um, stay tuned. It's going to be a fun two weeks. All right. So that's projectveritas.com. And, of course, people can usually find this uh, on YouTube. And James O'Keefe, three eyes. Do not enter in the number three, as I just specified earlier, uh, unless you want to never eat eggs again. James, thank you for being here, sir. We appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Don't be a victim and miss out on Lotto with Crowder's Halloween spooktacular U of M takeover October 25th. Costume contest details to follow. Overflow room at Pier Point Commons Lounge. <laughs> Kind of sad when you think about it. Bunny ran away. Our next guest is uh, one of the stars of the, the the latest film, the Gosnell movie. Of course, we had yeah. Ann McElhinney and Philim on the program. You can follow him yeah. at the Real Dean Kane, not the at Real Dean Kane, but yeah, I just say that's the somebody Dean else. Kane. You know what else? Also, he's also somebody who um, I, I often people often confuse me. They say, "Hey, are you like are you a young Dean Kane?" I say, "No, I'm Stephen Crowder." <laughs> they go, "Oh, I thought so." We often get con- we have that in common. How are you, Mr. Kane? I'm doing well. I understand that they give me that time. They're like, "Are you an old Stephen Crowder?" I'm like, "No, <laughs> no." And by old, no, by no. old Stephen Crowder, they mean current Stephen Crowder. I'm, I'm getting gray <laughs> here at 31, and you don't have one. Are you just fermenting it, or is this just all? Natural? I don't. No, it's. Uh, I have like a little bit here, a little little piece here, one or two, and then when I grow my beard, it gets gray. Oh, that's does it? Look sage. Yeah, it's gray in there. It's, okay. Well, my uh, son says I look ten years older. Are, and are you, are you always tan? <laughs> are you always tan? Yeah, yeah. No. Um, because I live in Malibu, California, and it's gorgeous all the time. Yeah. And if I don't uh, have a tan, apparently I have a sickly green color. Right. No, I, pre- I, I you know, but skin cancer yeah, notwithstanding. I mean, is it like a racial uh, thing? As a you know, with your your ethnically ambiguous sort of heritage, are you just naturally yeah. more golden? <laughs> Skin cancer notwithstanding. Uh, no, I think uh, I kind of have a green tint to me, but I, it's always sunny here. It's always beautiful. So you're always outside doing things. So I have a bit of a tan. Uh, and if I don't have that, it's just it's not a good look. Really? I think it's always not a good eth- look. It's not the ethnic makeup. The Japanese in me doesn't, doesn't <laughs> yeah, give me uh, the blame. dark. <laughs> and certainly the Irish and the English don't do it. Okay, before we get to guys down, but before we get to the Tom Arnold dust up, have you ever played that up? Like you said, the Japanese heritage. Be honest, for a role, have you ever like gone in, Japanese. maybe tried to dress a little more stereotypical, or like bowed a little bit, or spent some more time <laughs> in the sun? Have you ever used it to your advantage? Be honest. No, never. I don't. In fact, um, I've played. Well, I've played Latino. Yes. I've played Italian. I've played things like that, but I've never played Asian ever. Racism. Never, ever, ever, ever. <laughs> And, you know, if I was trying to get into Harvard, which, why would I do that? Because I went to Princeton. Um, it would be a detriment. So, yes. no, I'm, I have not used the Asian card. I haven't played my Asian card. But I promise you, I am more than one 1,024th. Yes, exactly. I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. Which, but by the way, Asian, you know, land bridge, Native American. So you are yeah. more Native than uh, Elizabeth true. Warren. Oh, I, I, probably 20 times as much, to be honest, which would make me one you know, 400th or something. Pro- uh, probably more that you'd probably bad, be surprised. Bad. You'd probably be surprised. Do you not process alcohol w- well with your Asian heritage? I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I try to process it very well. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember the last time I drank. It was probably last night. I just don't remember. I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, because that was good. That was between that, the, the 23. You, you went from a, yeah, from Indian to, to Japanese. Japanese really was good. I went from how to I don't know, and I have a sake. 
Um, no, the 23 in me, I talked about this with, with one of my doctors, my, my psychiatrist, because uh, you know, people are gonna look, he's crazy. We did genetic testing and they, they've been using this for quite a while. And uh, th I'm what they call a super metabolizer. So in other words, it, it, it's very difficult for me to get drunk or when they put me under for surgery, both times they said count backwards from 10 and I counted backwards from 10 twice. So they had to up it to the maximum gas dose uh, and they seemed surprised and they looked into my genetic and they go, oh, okay, well this actually makes sense. There's this kind of, you know, whatever it is. Gen I, I don't, I don't, I, there's like a, there's a whole thing about it. But the point is I sat down with a doctor, uh, but I didn't use it to necessarily prove that I was 1,000th, uh, 24th, uh, Native American. Have you seen act other actors do that, though, the Elizabeth Warren, to try and get a leg up with roles? No, I mean, I haven't noticed that. I, at least yeah, I haven't been involved in that in the casting process or seen that. Uh, possibly it's done. Steven Seagal! Uh, he's, he's gone from being Italian to I spent all, my, all of my years with the blacks in Detroit to then he's Italian to then Native American. Come on! Yeah, he did. That's interesting. Uh, but he, you know, he started with the Italian and I think he was in pretty good shape. Um, with the Italian. Yeah, with the Italian. <laughs> and, and a little further. Now he's a Russian, so I don't even yeah, know. Knows. Exactly. A Russian. Have you seen all over the place? Have you seen his Russian dancing? Have you ever seen that when he's no. down the square? He's literally <laughs> like they're doing the other and he it's like a child who doesn't know the lyrics to a song. <laughs> when I was in French Canada, I remember these kids used to like simple uh, simple plan and M and M. And they would try and sing, you know, they remember two trailer park girls go round the outside. Remember that? Uh, quarter black Garrett? Yep. He, yeah, you know, he's white guy. And I they mean, would they would say in English, they were French, they'd go, Whitest. two trap park go go run the offside, <laughs> run the offside, run. So that's what at Steven Seagal dancing, they're doing this whole and he literally goes like this. <laughs> of course, there it is. <laughs> And he's doing it. It's the funniest. Thing. All right. Before we get to Gosnell, obviously, uh, important movie. Let's show the clip that we do have of you had a dust up with none other than, than than Tom Arnold. What exactly happened? Was it? Did I get this correct? He accused you of being a racist or something? Yeah, he accused me on Twitter of being racist and anti LBGT, and then said I was complicit um, because I spoke at the uh, Values Voter Summit about the film Gosnell. Yeah. So he said that, you know, because you were there, you are guilty by association and th these are the people you run around with and you're a racist and you're anti-LGBT. Well, it just turns out that I was going to do politicking with um, Larry King at the same day he was there. Right. And I saw him on the screen and I thought, is he here? That's interesting. I'll, I'm going to ask him because I've known Tom for a long time. And we're not great friends, but I've been, you know, hi, how are you, whatever, and friendly. And uh, so he came out. And he's like, hey, Dean Cain, good to see you. Gave me like a little half hug and things. And I was just like, wow, I was there to talk about the film Goss Now. But I thought he didn't see, he just called me a racist like five days ago. Yeah. But he's not saying a word about it. And so then he gets ready to leave. And I go, Tom, you, you called me a racist. Yeah. What, what, what is that about? And then he came over and then somebody filmed it and put it out there. But, you know, then he was, once I, it's the thing that happens with the Twitter warriors. Right. I'm going to call you all these awful things with no corroboration, nothing behind it. Yeah. Right. Just throw out these, these, these ridiculous allegations and then there's no consequence. Right. Well, I was there face to face and I said, you're calling me a racist and I'm not okay with that or anti LGBT. Right. I'm not okay with that. And people could go watch then, the whole clip. He didn't see, he just seemed to say, well, where, 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 where did I say that? Where did I say that? Where did I say that? And then he obviously said it. What happened? But I didn't see what happened after me. that. Well, he wanted to. He wanted me to show him the the tweet, which I didn't have readily available on my phone. Um, maybe he didn't remember putting it out there. Yeah, I don't oh, know. Maybe, maybe he was in Canada uh, yeah. where they have legalized marijuana right now. You know, yeah, yeah, avoiding the feds. Wow. Um, yeah. So, so then nothing happened to it. Basically, he said, "Oh, I wasn't talking about you. I wasn't talking about you." And was very, very, um, um, not apologetic, but certainly wasn't um, wasn't the guy that he was the next few days on Twitter, where he's like, "Dean Kane's a." And I should have kicked his ass and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Well, I mean, he saw your guns and was like, uh, I didn't say that. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, I, well, I, I mean, saw your highlight. If you're going to call, <laughs> call somebody that on Twitter, call them that to their face. Yeah. What and would you just have done? Happens. What would you have done if he said, yeah, I, 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 I did that. Yeah, I did that, Dean Cain. You're a p I, I, Oh, well, geez. Then I probably would have come at him with a little stronger language. Uh -oh. And maybe maybe got in his space a little. I certainly wouldn't have fought him unless he were to strike me first. Yeah. In which case, I would have to defend myself. Yeah. Vigorously. What if he just started dancing like this? <laughs> <laughs> it's like drunken well, boxing. Surrender. Yeah. I, 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 would <laughs> I would have to surrender for sure because that's intimidating. What? what? I would think he was having an epileptic, 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 ep
Crazy beats EMT. Superman every time. That's it's it's the it's the kryptonite for Dean Cain in real life is just insane. It's the insanity plea. It, it is bizarre. We just <laughs> talked with with James O'Keefe about this. Tom Arnold knows that he tweeted that to you, and then he continued. You know, he just lied. That's yeah. that's just a lie. So it, yeah. did, did you find that kind of? Uh, caught you off guard because you didn't know how to react. Like you don't expect a grown ass man to just completely lie to save face. You, you know, the, no, because he's a coward, yeah. and a coward will do anything to get out of a tough situation. So no, I didn't. I, I didn't expect that he would say you are a damn racist and blah blah blah. Because if he'd done that, then he was at least secure in his convictions. But I'm farther. I'm the farthest thing from a racist or a white supremacist or anti LGBT. I mean, it's ridiculous. So I mean. It's just completely ridiculous. He knew it. He wasn't going to win that argument. He wasn't going to convince me I was a racist or anti-LGBT or anything like that, or a white supremacist, you know, Japanese dude named Tanaka. It just wasn't going to happen. Yeah. Well, you should just slap down your 23 and me and said, "All right, Tom, your move," and then say, "I think you're the white supremacist." Uh, also, he didn't come to white supremacist to my face, just a racist. Which I'm not sure what that's about. And then he also said the film Gosnell was some putrid pile of. You know, whatever. Oh, of course, this was like four days before it was released. Right. Or the day before it even – it was like four days before it was released. And I know he didn't see one of the, the screenings. So how did he know that was a terrible movie? Yeah, hmm. that's well, – that, and it's interesting to me it because just, why would he Why would he say that? You know, it seems to me that, the, the you know, you have a lot of conservatives who said it's uh, – who have rightfully said it's one of the socially most important films in years. And one thing I, I think about Gosnell, you know, a lot of people think that you find common ground in the center. I actually don't. I think sometimes you find common ground with people by by looking at the most radical among us. For example, people who consider themselves pro, pro-life pro or pro-abortion still look at Gosnell and go, all right, we can agree on that. We're not agreeing in the middle. We're agreeing on the crazy. So most people I've seen on the left have said, yeah, Gosnell's a monster. Um, but some people, how has the reaction been overall? Overall, it's been extremely positive. I keep hearing people talk about how they saw the film and it's family members and friends of families and people that I know and trust. And they say they saw the film in a, in a, a decently crowded theater and it was dead silent through the through the credits. And then it sparked conversation. And there's things that people are talking about days and days afterward. And it sticks with them and they're having the conversations because it's the kind of film that you makes you think twice. I'm, I'm a pro-choice guy up until viability of the fetus. Not for my own life. I'm completely pro-life in my own life. I just wouldn't, if I were a legislator, if I were a lawmaker. Boo! I Boo! You know, I Racist! No. Boo! <laughs> here's the thing. We disagree on that. We can have a conversation, and that's great. Yeah. And, you know, if, if and viability at 20 weeks, at five months, is over 50%. And at 25 or 26 weeks, it's at 90%. I mean, so, and most most states have that as their law. It's 20 to 24 weeks in there. And then, then unless there's, extru- you know, extenuating circumstances, it's illegal. Which is, by the way, considered really radical. Even if you look at the more liberal uh, countries in Europe, w- we allow it to go very, very late. And the vi- here's one thing I will say with that. You know, you mentioned viability. And obviously, I'm pro-life, and I don't want to get into a whole debate about it. But that argument, the more science comes in, uh, the, ironically, the less viable that argument is. Because today, for example, yes, I know. you have a baby that's born in New York City. It's viable because it's, you know, in Lenox Hill Hospital versus the hills of West Virginia. Well, is, is one a life and one isn't? And so it's it's not really, it's not something that can be applied consistently. Uh, I agree with you. my issue with it. But with, with Gosnell, but, but I, that's not I, even a question. But I agree with you. Yeah. A whole a wholeheartedly I agree with you. And and governmental change is incremental and it should be incremental. Yeah. And, that, and I, I agree with that a whole, 100%. I just don't want to legislate giving government more power in that sense over what women can do with their body to a certain degree. Once it's somebody that's viable, once it's a a viable child, then I think you have to put the foot down. I don't want it in my own life. I'm 100% pro-choice in my life. I mean, pro-life, pro-life yeah. in my choice. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that one we take that Tom out like, see, he's a fraud. <laughs> no, like I would never have that happen. And I've had it happen yeah. to me. I had a girl that I was dating that aborted a child. And that was one of the most devastating things in my life. Yeah. So I lived through it and I wasn't informed of the choice. You know, I can imagine, you know, that's something that's often, we're stripped of that often. They say, well, no penis, no opinion. It's like, well, hold on a second. It took two people to make that baby. And just because physically you are not basically the vessel for the baby at that point. And I get it. That's a wonderful miracle of life. It doesn't mean that you don't have a say. And I know, I've known several people where this has happened. What your story is not, n- not all too dissimilar from many people listening. And that turns a lot of guys very pro-life. But this is kind of a good example, right? We don't agree on everything when it, as it comes to abortion, but we both agree on Gosnell. And do you think that's why the film uh, has been so, it's been more widely well-received than I anticipated. Do you think that's a portion as to why? 
It, it, it could be. I mean, I think people, honest to goodness, really had no idea of what this guy was doing. They didn't understand that he was inducing live birth to viable children, then they're out and they're viable, here's a live child, and then snipping their spinal cords to ensure fetal demise. They didn't yeah. realize that's what he was doing. And there's examples, you know, we're not, the film isn't graphic. The right. film doesn't show horrible things, but you see the emotional toll it takes on the mothers, um, uh, the women who had uh, had abortions, women, women who changed their mind. There's one of a woman who changes her mind in between. He told them they couldn't, that he couldn't change her mind. You know, she, she, he said, no, you can't, you can't change your mind. You've already started. She's like, no, and she bolted out of there and had her child. Yeah. You know, and, and she gives incredibly powerful testimony. Uh, it's so the, the film isn't it isn't gory, but it really it'll make you think and it'll make you talk about it in the way that we should be talking about it. And the truth is, there's probably clinics like that all over the country right now that people yeah. aren't aware. Of. Yeah, that they absolutely do exist all over the country. And one thing again, you know, take a step back even further. You know, let's go to Planned Parenthood. Everyone goes, well, hold on, that's sensible. Well, actually, Planned Parenthood, they are still taught to upsell. Abortion yeah. is where they make all of their money. We've talked this idea that I think it's what only seven percent of their profit comes from, seven percent of the revenue comes from abortion. So if you go in for an abortion, they do the math where doctor visit, ultrasound, uh, medicine, the procedure. So basically, you've gone in for an abortion, but it counts as one of five services. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, exactly. And you know, uh, three hundred sixty thousand abortions a year. That's a big number. Right. Yeah. And, and they are, we actually, had Abby, uh, I forgot his name, Abby Johnson on the show. We, we had her on the show, I believe, actually first before a book came out. And she was a former director of Planned Parenthood. And she said, we were told to basically get them in the stirrups and upsell them on abortion because that's the only way Planned Parenthood made money. Think about it. Birth control is effectively free. It's a $7 prescription for a lot of the stuff that they're passing out. That is their main money maker. So you even take God's nail and scale it back to that. You go, oh, hold on a second. It's the same kind of business practices. It's oh, the same yeah. business practice as a used car salesman um what was it like doing this film because you know you hear a lot sort of like of jim caviezel when he did passion of the christ you know, he got electrocuted you hear people who get into these roles that are just kind of deep and sometimes it takes a little while to pull them out of out of that funk obviously this is dark subject matter uh what did it take a bit of a toll on you was it a little bit draining to to be a part of the project and to kind of pull yourself out of it afterward no, not really, because I've seen some awful things in my day, which is unfortunate. You know, going over to Iraq in 2005 and seeing a lot of guys shot and blown up and things like that, awful, spending a lot of time around veterans and people like that. And having become a reserve police officer myself, you see awful things. And so you kind of get used to seeing that. I was playing a de police detective. It doesn't make it okay to see it, but you can compartmentalize to some degree. Right. The thing is, we were shooting this stuff in the clinic. And we're shooting the clinic stuff, and I'm looking at the stuff, and there's cats running around and unsterilized equipment and trash bags full of, quote, fetuses and, you know, uh, milk cartons in the refrigerator full of fetuses and baby's feet in jars. And I kind of – I said to the guys, I go, guys, you know, I know we're, we're, we're doing this, and you set deck all this stuff, and you put this stuff. But aren't we pushing it a little far? I mean, aren't we just taking it a little far? And they go, you want to see the real footage? It's like, yeah, let me show me the real stuff. They go, sure. Show me the real footage. Exact. Yeah. Almost exactly the same. The place Gosh. was – a house of horrors. I mean, the girls were coming in and getting checked and things like that, and leaving with venereal diseases right. because he was he wasn't sterilizing equipment. He was making about a million eight a month, or a million, I guess, a year. I'm sorry, a year. And he was also dealing drugs, and I mean, and he thinks he did nothing wrong. Yeah, he thinks he's helping these young girls out. It's it, it was it's just a frightening thing, and I just hope people continue to go out and see the film. And Anne and Philemon are meticulous about that. I mean, they, they, they do stage plays that are entirely based on transcripts and court testimony. So uh, it's not the kind of thing they would mess around with because their entire yeah. reputation does rest on accuracy. Um, where, so where can people uh, find out where uh, as to where it's playing near them? Gosnellmovie.com. Gosnell, Gosnell, G-O-S-N-E-L-L movie.com. And it'll show you. I'm going to go see it today. Again. Again. Yeah. There you go. Well, don't say it with a smile on. It's a somber film. Come on, dude. Look, read son. the room. <laughs> read the <laughs> Skype. That's bad. Very bad. But I'm going to take my son to see it because I think it's important for him to see it. He's 18. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's really important for him to see it because he doesn't really have a thought process on it now. He doesn't have, he's not thinking about being a dad. He better not be thinking about being a dad. <laughs> he better no, not, he's not thinking about that. Um, and it doesn't make any sense to him. But he has—he doesn't really have a. He's a tabula rasa, you know, a blank slate. He's going to go in there and be horrified. And I—and I'm glad. I want him to be. Yeah, it's kind of like you know, if a kid, you, you catch him smoking a cigarette, and then you make him smoke the entire pack. <laughs> that happened. That sounds like it was personal. Steve. Yeah. Well, not exactly, but you know. <laughs> Uh, and it was unplayed. In French Canada, you pretty much start with a whole pack anyway. Really quickly, I know you have some other pro – I think you were – you said you were filming like two films last week. Is there anything yes. that you can kind of tease a little bit for people or no? 
Uh, the biggest thing I want to tease now is a documentary that I'm doing, that I'm, I'm a exec produce again. I did the one about the Armenian genocide that's been huge, Architects of Denial. We're currently doing one called Hate Among Us, which is, deals with the rise of anti-Semitism throughout the world and the, and, and the rise in the number of people who are denying that the Holocaust took place. So it, it's kind of a strange world, you know, that people go, oh, no, that didn't happen. Oh, sure. You know, like, like Ahmadinejad who said, you know, like, oh, yeah, no, there was no Holocaust. That didn't happen. Right. That's just made up. No, nah, that's yeah. not the case. We're doing a, a documentary on that, which I'm really happy to, to promote and talk about. And, uh, okay. you know, I also did the kitten bowl yesterday for, for Hallmark. So that's oh, very yeah. important. Yeah, well, thank you. The kitten bowl. <laughs> yeah. kitten bowl. Hey, hey, you want to see what happens with the, the, the little long tails and, and the pouncy panthers, you know? I, I do. I feel like they, the Hallmark either has you on retainer or speed dial. Because when it's they have me on a speed dial, speed dial retainer. It's actually a weird <laughs> combo. Yeah. And they have I love the Hallmark Channel because I love Christmas and I love – listen, I say yes to a lot of projects. I'll do projects with friends of mine who are making a little $100,000 movie because they need you know, they need people to say yes. And why not? Why not work? Why not? I'm an actor. Yeah, Act. no, I understand. Listen, I, I love watching those because I, I have Hallmark on a loop. Sometimes I, it's a little much. Sometimes <laughs> I'm like, all right, listen, this is the same one like the last movie and the next movie. Let's, okay, let me put it on a, on a break for a bit and let me go watch Scrooge or something. But uh, well, yeah, Scrooge is a good one. Scrooge is a very dead. good one. So the Armenian Genocide, the, the, I know that documentary is out there. And, you know, listen, the worst case scenario, you deny the Armenian Genocide, you, you just get the biggest, uh, biggest, most highly supported uh, YouTube news channel there is. And, you, you know, you become the main host of it. Yeah. There you go. That's how that works all out. Right. Uh, yeah. All right, Dean Kane at Real Dean. Dean Kane, come on back when you have that doc. Come on back for any reason. We always it's been it's been a spell since you've been here. I know, and I miss you guys. All right, we'll be back. This town ain't big enough for the two of us. Uh, actually, as a matter of fact, geographically, there is physical room for... I've had enough of your asbestos latent smug talk. Fill your tumbler, you son of a... Louder with Crowder Studios. Protected exclusively by Walther. And Hopper. Join the Mug Club, because I've seen a lot of mugs in my day, and this is by far the best. This could function as a weapon. It's got a lot of girth, weight. That's not at all what we rehearsed. First off, it's, it's not the Mug Club. It's Mug Club. As a matter of fact, saying yeah. Mug Club instead of the Mug Club, the fact that you don't even have to specify the means it's really, it is the only one that matters. Ukraine's like that. It's just Ukraine, not the Ukraine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You want to take it from the top? Mug Club has a girthy, weighty club. Uh, Mug. Also, we're sponsored by Walther, by the way. Great sponsor, Walther. Yeah. I'm going to take it from here. Uh, great sponsor with Walther. <laughs> <laughs> Mug Club. $99 annually for those people. Who, listen, the free content that you see is uh, ironically supported by the premium content. So even if you don't want to watch the show or the entire CRTV lineup or get this wonderful, exclusive, hand-etched, hand-painted mug, uh, you still get to support the content. Of course, we do the show every single day behind the paywall. A lot of people saying, where's the rest of the, the love guru life advice segments? Well, that's if you join Mug Club. $99 annually. Lateralcutter.com slash Mug Club. 69 if you're a student, veteran, active military of course next week during the live stream we will have a specific promo code during the yeah. u of m uh spooktacular see you then on with the show That's the drowning queen who was trying to be sexy with the drowning dance and then realized he was going to die. Oh. Thank you, Dean Kane, and yeah, uh, to uh, James O'Keefe, oh. uh, James O'Keefe III. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, everyone who, who, who's been here. Great show. Great few weeks of shows. Next week, huge show at U of M. I know, like I said, it's uh, sold out, but uh, is it the Point Place? What is it? Uh, we just listed it. It's up on the yeah. website. There's a new overflow room. We'll be doing giveaways, costume it's gonna contests. Be awesome. Owen's going to be there. Eric Nimmer, Gerald, some surprise guests. And it's a spectacular costume contest. Bring your costumes. Make it a lot of fun. The more offensive the costume, the better. But, you <laughs> yeah. know, it has to be something that's not a security risk. Uh, so next week, no we'll masks. be on the road. There's going to be another uh, Tough Love. 
with yeah. Guru Credit or Life Advice segment. So send your, uh, send your, is it Life Advice at LadderWithCredit.com? I think so. Send your emails in yes. for what you want us to help you with. Uh, that'll go up Monday, and then we'll just kind of have some updates because we will be on the road going to U of M setting up Thursday. Oh, yeah. So Tuesday, Wednesday will not be normal shows. Uh, big show. We're looking forward to it. Going, going back home. Really, this, this show started, a, a lot of people don't know this, effectively as an AM radio show uh, up in Ann Arbor, Detroit. When it started, before that I had just done YouTube videos, short form videos, but then it started as a three hour morning show and then developed into what you see now. So um, looking forward to getting back there and of course being protested. Um, <clears throat> speaking of which, you know, something I wanted to talk about. I, I know the last couple, of, last couple of episodes has been practical advice, but it hasn't necessarily been inspiring. This is something that actually, when I was up north here, taking a semi long weekend that, that, that hit me. Um, hold on a second, get, quarter black, say something. What's up, man? Uh, That's terrible. Drink, All right, I had enough of that. I just had to drink some water. <laughs> For people listening, if you're not listening, by the way, you can always uh, download iTunes. A lot of people are saying, well, if I'm on the road, YouTube doesn't work. Download it iTunes yeah. and catalog. Yeah, that's the one thing that doesn't go down. Much love. It, yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, I was up north with my wife, and um, she has a friend. I'm trying to think of how to do this without... I, don't, I never want to reveal personal information that embarrasses anyone. But this is a, fa- a friend of the family, just a tremendous woman uh, whose husband had passed away in the last, um, I think, year and a half. And she was talking about how hard it was. And when we asked how she was doing, you know, it's one of those things where you often ask people, hey, how are you doing? And and it leaves your mouth and you realize, oh, wait, this is who I'm talking to. Someone whose husband just died. And you feel terrible. But she didn't hold that against us. But uh, she started talking about how how, how hard it was. Um, She started talking about maybe getting a, a gun because she lives in a remote area. She was talking about uh, how lonely, you know, it was, how, how hard it was just to adapt to being alone. And then she talked about something specific that stood with me. She said that her furnace went out. And she said that's what drove her off the edge. She said it was just, she said it was just one more thing and the furnace went out. And I was thinking, how am I going to have to fix this? And she said something that I think we've all said to ourselves and I've heard a lot. And I, I, I read this a lot in the emails that you send me. She said, I just, I don't think I can handle one more thing. I'm at the point where I just can't handle one more thing, is what, in, what she said. And that, that stuck with me. What I'm about to say, by the way, is do not take as anything less than completely sympathetic to this woman in a horrible situation. And a lot of people out there going through similar situations, some people going through situations that are, are even worse, um, some that might not be as bad. Matter of fact, not to get too much off on the tangent, but that's why we're going to U of M. Uh, that's why we created an overflow party after the, 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 the room got full. The, the auditorium, the theater got completely full. And it's hosted by Eric Nimmer. Because, listen, we know that on campuses, especially places like Ann Arbor, um, no one has been othered. No one has been marginalized more than right-leaning, more than conservative students. It doesn't matter if you're black, you're yellow, white, male, female, trans. If you're a conservative on campus, you've got some crap to deal with. You've been berated by students or by the current mobs, the M word we're not supposed to say. You've been failed by professors. You're afraid to speak out. And every now and then, you probably just come to that point where you say, I just, I don't think I can, you get an F on a paper. I just don't think I can handle one more thing. And I'm not saying that to compare it to someone whose husband died. The point is, everyone has a different burden to bear. And a kid, a little kid loses his toy. It doesn't seem like a big deal to us. In his scope of reality, that's the worst thing that's ever happened to him. He has everything to compare it to. So I understand that for a lot of people, this seems as big of a deal. We've often thrown our hands up. I, I just don't think I can handle one more thing. You're at that point. You're at the edge. And that's what this lady said, those words. I just don't think I can handle one more thing. Here's the good news for you. You can. You can handle one more thing. Often I see people and I, I get these emails, I'm at the end of my rope. I don't know that I can handle one more thing. The good news is you usually, almost always can. Now don't misconstrue what I'm saying here and what I'm about to say. I'm not saying that you should be living your life in a constant state of crisis where you always feel like you're at the end of your, your, your rope. You're always redlining the engine because th- that, that's a bad thing, okay? I've talked about that. You don't want to be that. And that's why it's so important to push yourself in a controlled environment, to learn your limits so that you aren't constantly pushing them. So I'm not saying you can always take one more thing. Yeah, yeah, take everything. Like, no, no, your life should not be that way constantly. What I am talking about here is when life has put you in a situation where you feel overwhelmed, I know a lot of you do, I felt it very recently actually, where you feel like I just can't handle one more thing. I know a lot of you out there feel that way, and so I want to offer you encouragement. But I, you know what? I know that, that, that encouragement is not just done through feeling. So let's do something pragmatic. Let's do a thought exercise here. I want you to do me a favor, okay? Actually, whatever you're doing, take a second, take a deep breath. I want you to think back to the hardest point that you can remember in your life, okay? It's not pleasant, I know. I want you to think back to the last time you said to yourself, man, I just don't, I just don't think I can handle one more thing. How long ago was that? 
Where were you when that happened? How did you feel? What led to that? I want you to actually put yourself back in that moment in time, okay? Are you there? Now, how are you here today? You're here now. Is this, is your current situation, the way you're feeling now, is it worse than that one? Because you made it through that, when at that point you didn't think you could handle one more thing. And whether that was five years ago, that was two months ago, guess what? You're here. You not only handled one more thing, you probably had to handle five, 10, 20, 100 more things, and you're still here. And for the most part, if you put that moment in your life, you're probably better off now. Um, now, again, if you're being you know, you're removed from that chapter, having handled that, or, or, or multiple more issues that arose, you're probably in a better place now than you were then. And, uh, let, let me also, let me issue a caveat. Maybe that's not the case. There are some people out there, maybe the problem you're facing right now is actually legitimately worse than this situation that you thought of in your head. What, the, the situation that was previously the hardest time in your life, and you're answering this question going, actually, I think right now this is, this is worse. Here's the good news. And I know this isn't going to sound like good news. You'll probably have a harder situation down the line than this one. Which means that down the line, you'll be looking back at this situation, even though it's harder than the one you just pictured five or 10 years ago. But five or 10 years from now, you'll look back on this as a time where you said, I can't handle one more thing, and you did it anyway. You handled one more thing. I'm not saying that what you're going through isn't hard. I'm not saying that it doesn't suck. I'm not even saying that this isn't the kind of situation that has brought people to their knees before. I'm not saying that someone's husband dying is an absolutely horrifying thing. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be cancer. It could be toxic relate. You could have lost a relationship. My point is just as surely as there have been people who've been conquered by this before, there have been people who've beaten it. There have been people who've come before you, whatever it is that you are dealing with right now, whatever it is, people have come before you and thought, man, I just, I just, I can't handle one more thing. And they could, they did and they're better for it. And these people are often successes and you don't even know it. A lot of the people who we see we go, man, I wish it could be them. They're so successful. There's some, there's some pain in those people that you probably will never even know. And a big difference is when it came to that time where it's, man, I just don't think I can do one more thing. They did. The point is this, almost invariably, when you say, I just can't handle one more thing, good news, you're wrong. You almost always, let me, you know, let me rephrase that. Don't even think of it as saying anything to yourself that I can't handle. Because that voice, that voice saying you can't, that's not you. So right now, make that decision that the voice you hear saying, I'm at the end of my rope, I don't think I can handle one more thing, it's not you. It's a voice saying you're at the end of your rope. It's a voice saying you can't handle one more thing. Now, you don't know who that voice is. Maybe you're, maybe you're a paranoid schizophrenic. Maybe you did bath salts. Maybe you did too much dab before your cerebral cortex was fully developed. Whatever, I don't know. That guy, that voice, that's another guy. You're the guy or girl who can always take one more thing. Decide that. You're the guy or girl when that voice says, I don't think you can handle one more thing, responds with, pipe down back there. Like Phil Hartman in Turbo Man, another reference to that, and takes action. Now again, if you find yourself living on this edge all the time, this is important, you have a problem. There are things you're con you can control, and I've talked about and there are things that you can't. You can control having a through line of balance in your life. You can control rest and recovery with hard work and not redlining that engine all the time. Do not misunderstand this. But the fact is there's a lot more uh, out there that you can't control. Cancer, a death in the family, like we said, bad relationships, the factory where you work shut down. I don't know what it is. You got an F on your paper because Charles Hermes is your professor and he didn't like that you said something about socialism. Sometimes you get some tough breaks, okay? and it's out of your control. And sometimes you get a string of them, but you do not have to let them beat you. And when you hear that voice, and it's not your voice saying, I just don't think I can handle one more thing. If you give into it, you allow those traumas to define you, and it will bother you for the rest of your life. I've asked this question a lot. It's a, it's a question I often ask of people who are the best in any situation, whether it was Brendan Schaub, George St. Pierre, you know, what's harder to accept? The mistakes that you could have avoided, where you go back and go, oh, I should have done this, or, when you've done everything right, when you've done everything correctly, and you've come up short anyway. Almost invariably, the people who are successful, the people who are the best in their given field say, I think it's when I made a mistake myself. Because they can sleep, they can put their head in the pillow saying, I know, I know I did my best. There was nothing else in my control that I could have improved upon. If you don't, if you don't, these, these issues will bother you for the rest of your life. So for those of you out there feeling like you can't handle one more thing, let me read it. The good news is you can. And I'm not just saying hang on like a poster of a cat on a, on a fireman's pole. 
I'm not just saying, hey, hang in there, buddy. I'm saying fight back. It doesn't matter that you're at the end of your rope. It doesn't matter that right now you feel like you can't handle one more thing. You can't. And whatever that thing may be, give it hell. Choose right now that voice is not yours. You will not allow it to define you. And the good news is, even though it's gonna suck, it might be painful, you can handle one more thing. And to those feeling like this at the University of Michigan, reinforcements are on the way. October 25th, we're gonna see you there. Power Center, get ready. See you next week. Yeah.